by this. Less than 1% is in the service, has a child in the service, a spouse in the service, a father in the service. We don't have the same up close touch of this and nor does the service have the same up close connection with society that I think is important. And so for that reason, I think we've got to do things, consider a draft and whatnot to try to get a better connection. You know, I'm very interested to hear you say that because I was at, a, uh, at, at one of these session, uh, sessions this morning when Charles Murray was talking about the disconnect that is now developed between the very upper classes and, and the middle class. There seems to be no real common experience for Americans anymore that we can all share. I mean, I'm old enough to remember uh, World War II and when everybody had an uncle or a father or, or somebody, the, everybody had a stake in it. And, and I, I, it, it saddens me now to know that I actually know people, good people, who don't know a single person in the United States military. My guess is we're not gonna get a draft through. But what is your take on some sort of mandatory uh, national service? I am becoming a little bit more extreme on this each year. Uh, right now, I think everybody 56 years old and younger ought to have to serve two years. I'm 57. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, no, what, what I really believe is I think we need national service, and I think you need it either at the conclusion of high school or university. I don't. I don't think people, I don't think young people would really fight it if, if it was fair, if everybody did it. You could only take a small part of that in the military, so I'm not talking military, I'm talking about all kinds of things. But I also think that the payoff is not what they do, it's not whether they go pill, build roads and parks or, or that sort of thing, it's what you put inside them. Because once you have contributed to something, you have a slightly different view of it. And I think that it would be good to have a shared experience. If, if every person that's age 25 and older gets, meets in a play and they all, the first question is, hey, where'd you serve? What'd you do? If that's the start of the conversation, I think it'd be really powerful. I think Israel gets amazing value out of that. How would you evaluate the state of America's security right now, and what do you see as the greatest threat to our security? Uh, yeah, I is it in, that. does it come from Afghanistan? Is it someplace else? Is it Al Qaeda? No, it's a lot closer. It's in our schools. Um, yeah. Let me scare you a little bit. You know, I hate to use fear. A third, almost a third of all high school kids don't graduate. They can't, they're not eligible for the military. So you now have broken it to two thirds or even eligible. And then you break it down with people who've got physical problems, obesity, different you know, uh, legal problems. And you are really down to about 33% of the nation is actually even eligible to serve in the military. And that's the same third that you're competing with, Yale, Harvard, all those, all the, all those other places. So it's a national security issue. And I think that's the one that ought to really worry us. Um, I think the other things around the world, we can sort those out. We can figure them out uh, over time. We have the ability, the, cap the, uh, the technology and the forces to do that. I'm much more worried about sort of the fundamentals. General, it's a pleasure to interview you. Thank you so much.